Hi, I'm Ashley Seinbach, the Environmental Product Manager here at Institute. Today I want to show you how to calibrate the Aquatrol 600. So prior to beginning your calibration, whether you're in the lab or in the field, there's a few things that you need to make sure that you have. So of course you want to make sure that you have your instrument as well as the bottom part of the restrictor that you'd use for your deployment. You want to make sure that you have your communication device or your laptop computer. You also want to make sure that you have whatever calibration solutions that you're going to do or that are required by your standard operating procedure. Lastly, you want to make sure that you have a rinse bucket as well as some deionized water or fresh water and it's always good to have a roll of paper towels handy whenever you're doing your calibrations. Before you begin your calibrations, you will want to connect your instrument to either your Android tablet or your laptop computer. To do so, you will hold the instrument inverted at 180 degrees to activate your Bluetooth. As soon as your LCD display lights up, your Bluetooth is also activated. Once activated, you will pair your instrument with your device, and as soon as you pair with your device, it will find the instrument and bring you to the connected instrument screen so that you're able to get all of your information about your connected instrument as well as perform all of your calibrations. To begin your calibration, you want to make sure that the instrument is set up in calibration mode. So one of the unique things we did on this was actually provide a dual-sided restrictor that allows you to deploy the instrument but also perform your calibrations directly with the restrictor. So to put the instrument in calibration mode, you'll remove the restrictor, remove your bottom end cap, unscrew the end cap and actually flip the entire restrictor around. So as soon as you have your restrictor this way and insert it onto the instrument, you've created your calibration chamber. So before you add your calibration solution to your calibration chamber, it's really important that you make sure that both the surface of the sensors as well as the inside of your calibration chamber are incredibly clean. I like to start with a little bit of DI water and make sure that I've got everything nice and stripped out and inside of the chamber itself. Depending on how dirty things are, you may need to get a brush and clean things out really well. Once you have a clean surface, you can begin pouring in some of your solution. It's really important as well, before you begin your calibration, that you perform a rinse with the calibration standard that you're going to use for your calibration. So I like to do this two times to make sure that I've covered all of the surface of the sensors as well as the inside of the chamber. It takes only about 10 mils or so to get a really clean rinse with your calibration standard. Once you're ready to begin your calibration, you will fill the chamber with a little bit of your calibration standard and you always want to use the calibration standard that's close to the actual conductivity or pH of the water that you're going to measure. So once you're ready to go, you will go into the app. From the Connected Instruments page, you will click on Calibrations. Pick whichever calibration you are planning to perform. Some of the sensors have options for one, two, or three point calibration, so make sure you pick how many points you want to do from this set point. Click Next to go into your calibration screen. The calibration will be auto-detected, whatever standard that you're using as long as it's your traditional standard, but you also have the option to input a different value if you're using something that's not as standard. The app itself will give you updates based on how stable the calibration is and when you're ready to accept. Once you have three green check marks, you will click the accept button and the instrument will write that calibration information to the sensor itself. All of the calibration information is stored on the sensor, so no matter what instrument you have, the sensor um, installed on, you will be able to transfer that sensor from one to the other with that calibration information following the sensor. So once complete, it will give you a calibration summary of the sensor itself. So if you click full calibration report, every sensor that is installed on your sonde will provide updated information giving you the time, the last user calibrate date, calibration date, as well as the calibration information for that particular sensor. The calibration report with all of the sensor information can be easily emailed or sent to other folders that are available directly from the app. 
If you are performing a multi-point calibration, you'll want to follow the same rinse procedure that we just went through, making sure that you rinse with a little bit of DI water and then a little bit of your calibration solution prior to performing your second point or third point in your calibration. So even with multiple rinses and using the solution, the amount that you're using is a fourth and eighth of traditional methods, which will really save you a lot of money over a year of calibrations on the instrument. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you do need additional information, please visit our website at www.insitu.com. Thank you.